the whole thing, it started initially with an FAA uh, competition, and it was uh, designing transportation through airports. And so an initial team uh, came up with this idea of making this dynamically adjustable wheelchair that could fit into aisleways uh, in airplanes, because a lot of times people with uh, wheelchairs have difficulty because they can't get actually into their seat in the airplane. When we started in spring of last or uh, spring of 22 in the first semester of this capstone project, we were tasked with continuing that design. There was an entirely different mechanical chassis from the team last year, uh, so we were tasked with uh, rebuilding that and just improving the whole width adjustment feature. And that kind of leads into the requirements that we ended up setting up for the project as a whole. Right down here there was uh, the whole fact of it being able to turn with a zero turn radius, so turning in one spot and not having to like you know make a big turn. Again, the adjustable width, the whole thing about being able to adjust its width and get narrow to go down an aisleway and take someone uh, to their seat. Being able to navigate the obstacles, so this is like going over gaps, uh, going uh, over maybe bumps, a door uh, jam or something. The omnidirectional travel, so the strafing, being able to move in the different directions. And uh, some of these other ones were to do with passenger safety, so just being able to you know, travel at a reasonable speed and be stable. And so if someone's sitting on the wheelchair, it's not going to just fall over. And that was you know, with how we load things. It's like based on where we put things. You can't have too top-heavy or anything like that. And especially with it being an expandable and then contracting, like you can't have the load, you know, be too uh, unbalanced. It was uh, a wall wart. You would plug it into the wall wart. So it was not actually battery powered. And that was another improvement we made. It's now patterned with, uh, powered with a LiPo battery right here. That allows it so you don't have to be wired in or any connected. So that was a big improvement. And we also used the PS2 controller wirelessly to control the actual device itself. So when we were redesigning the whole mechanical chassis, it, it kind of went through some different things, and we started to go towards an aluminum chassis, and then realized that would be too high cost. So we ended up going with um, acrylic, uh, and that was cheaper. We were able to uh, laser cut it, and it also is nice because it allows you to see the internal components of what's going on inside the actual device as it's working. We had our LiPo batteries, we used the Arduino, we ended up remaining with these mechanism wheels, and uh, then we continued to have the um, motor drivers from the previous team and the exposed lead screw expansion mechanism for expanding and contracting the size of the device. The final CAD rendering of what the ex design would look like, again, you're seeing on this part, you're seeing from here down, this would be the aesthetic part of like adding the back of the chair and the arm uh, braces. Uh, once we kind of put it together, it was, we wanted to make sure this thing actually you know, was able to turn around and go from like, we tested it on like vinyl surfaces and low pile carpet to kind of test the different floor surfaces that would be in an airport typically. And could it go from one surface to another? Could it turn on those surfaces? Could it travel omnidirectionally? And then could it expand and contract on those surfaces? With this motor that we had, it's not enough low end torque. So one of the things we ran into, especially on the carpet, was expanding it and contracting it. It wouldn't exert enough torque. One thing I forgot to mention with it being contracting, you know, <laughs> could it fit through that airplane aisle with? In terms of challenges we faced when we started this problem, uh, we don't have any pictures of the other team's chassis, but it was a very tall chassis. They had these motors mounted vertically, and then the actual chassis sat above them. So it was like probably about this high off the ground before it even started to you know, get to any firm frame. And so we wanted to kind of lower the chassis to improve in rigidity a little bit. We were able to accomplish that just by folding the motors sideways. With that, we were also able to add suspension, which would help with the non-circular profile of the mechanism wheels vibrating while they were driving. Uh, and so you can actually see there's just a little bit of spring suspension in these wheels. In terms of challenges we faced as we started designing this particular prototype, uh, rigidity and over constraint between the wheel modules and the base module with all the electronics ended up being a really big problem that we kind of overlooked when we first designed it. Particularly this screw, or uh, this bearing, and then this bearing in the back with this lead screw caused a little bit of tension issues that needed to be resolved by loosening and tightening the screws over and over until it expanded and contracted smoothly. Uh, realistically, the better option in the future 
would be to reset it so that these two bearings were the constraining factor and the screw were kind of floating with only uh, this side and this side to stop it from translating back and forth. Another big task that we had is managing all the wiring that this thing you know, generated. Of course there's four motors worth of wires and then two wires running through each of the motor drives plus you know grounds and all sorts of other signals you know signal for the PS4 controller or PS2 controller uh, and so that that ended up being a really big issue that we overlooked throughout the design we've actually 3d printed some connectors uh, let me see if I can pull this out here we've 3d printed some connectors to help make these uh, connections to the Arduino more secure and uh, that's helped a lot in terms of keeping the wires from pulling out but uh, they're still kind of large and around and uh, that's going to be something the other team is going to have to improve is to figure out how to mount these wires correctly within this chassis. Additionally one last challenge we faced was with the expansion mechanism and the stepper motor back here. One of the big issues with that is that the stepper motor didn't have the low end torque it needed to actually spin the lead screws and open and contract the mechanism on its own. For the next team, we highly recommend that they switch to a brushed motor with a higher low end torque and uh, potentially uh, a gearbox of some kind in order to allow them to switch to uh, a faster expansion and contraction. So a lot of the knowledge that came from the design and the programming for this came from VEX and FRC robotics competitions. It's not as easy as throwing it in a model and slapping it together. Uh, that's a really big thing here in terms of experience for me. Like it's really easy to lay something out in CAD. It's another thing entirely to throw it on the laser cutter, get all these pieces cut out, bolt it all together, make sure it's all tight, you know, adjust the fits to make sure that we're not interfering with the wheels. It's all those little details that you don't think about when you first design something that, you know, you get to learn about when you're actually building it. And I think that's one of the things that really makes a good engineer is knowing those little details and building them into your design so that when you have a machine builder or a machinist you know machining your parts or designing and building the actual assembly you're not backing yourself into a corner per se one really good example of this is right here uh, these four screws are for tensioning the stepper belt in this particular case that was my design and that was my fault I backed myself into a corner because I didn't leave any way to access these screws from the outside. If I try and take this and, you know, get in here and twist these, I can't. So we had to set the tension of this belt before we even put the whole thing together, which resulted in some issues. And if I wanted to reset the tension of that belt, I'd have to take the whole thing apart. That is sloppy design. And that's something that I learned and will improve upon in my future, uh, you know, as a mechanical engineer, as an electrical engineer, just those little things. The real world experience of the problems that I've, you know, solved here and learned about here, that's gonna help me a ton moving forward into my career as an engineer.